I'm to share with you some thoughts on um, a subject that I'm quite passionate about, and that's terminology. I'll be um, attempting to show how we might use the framework offered by terminology to broach issues of um, content literacy, academic literacy, and the like. Um, so essentially, the background to this is, of course, that uh, in 2013, I got uh, a research grant uh, for teaching and learning. Um, and my main aim was to explore how we could use terminology as a framework for identifying, describing, explaining, and responding to challenges that we find in our students' uh, academic literacy practices. Um, so I really wanted to see what gaps there were between the expectations of the discipline, in this case, linguistic specifically multilingualism, um, and students' practices, and how we could use terminology as a framework for understanding those gaps. Now, the impetus, the motivation for wanting to do this, um, shortly after I joined uh, UWC, I, a couple of things struck me about uh, the essays of students I was grading. Uh, she's just been talking about the 100 or so scripts in linguistics. Um, we probably have the highest FTD ratios in the university. So I just got into my baptism of fire. I will be there a few days of uh, arriving. And all of these issues were coming up in scripts that I was seeing. And I said to myself, well, um, academic literacy is an unwieldy subject matter. It's, it's really, where do you broach it? There are 1,001 perspectives. But it seemed to me that there was something which the field of terminology studies could offer that had not been sufficiently exploited, that had not been sufficiently explored. Looking at the literature in some relevant areas, it was very clear to me that uh, technology, the value of technology for addressing issues such as this was really not recognized. If you look at educational outcomes research, for instance, work by Beats and the Bloom's Revised Taxonomy, issues of technology are placed on the lowest rungs of the academic, uh, uh, of the cognitive achievement uh, ladder. So it became very clear that it was important for us to begin to have a discussion that would attempt to assess the potential reach of technology as a framework in responding to issues of content literacy, academic literacy in our students. Okay, so the objectives of my research are, are stated here. Um, to unpack the nature and extent of technology-related gaps in the academic literacy practice of students on one hand and the expectations of the discipline. Uh, to investigate the roots of these gaps then to make explicit to students the kinds of uh, expectations that the discipline has of them with respect to technological knowledge and then hopefully in a second phase of the research it would be to make recommendations for an intervention aimed at tackling or responding to these challenges. Um, so a few words there on the methodology. Um, the module in question is a third year linguistics model on uh, multilingualism. And I typically start the uh, module with uh, a C map of uh, the major topics you know, link them. So we talk about multilingualism, we see how multilingualism is responded to in different historical periods, see how multilingualism is shaped by recent developments in linguistics, we see the factors that explain contemporary multilingualism, we look at types of multilingualism, we see how language policies, language planning enable us to manage multilingualism and so on. So, so it gives you a sense of what we do in this course. This is a course that is very rich in terms of um, concepts. Um, it's, it's a real concept 
rich module. And it was therefore very, very ideal for the kind of thing I sought to do. Now, um, what's terminology, you may ask? Um, what's this thing, this beast, as it were, called terminology? Um, terminology reminds me of the um, anecdotal elephant, you know. Um, you know, have uh, a number of uh, visually impaired people, you know, giving you their accounts of what this elephant is. But very simply, uh, for our purposes here, we'll see that technology is concerned with the concepts in a specific subject field. So whether it is history, uh, physics, um, linguistics, and so on and so forth. And what does it do? with the concepts of this field. It's interested in the relationships to objects, real or imagined. It is, related, it is interested in the characteristics of these concepts. It is interested in how these concepts are interlinked. It is interested in how concepts are defined. It is interested in the designations, um, the names assigned to these concepts. It is interested in the relationship between these labels. It is interested in how these designations are used, and so on and so forth. So, technology offers theoretical accounts for each of these issues I just mentioned. And we'll be seeing how this serves as a very useful backdrop for broaching issues of content literacy, academic literacy, in a minute. But just have a look at this uh, figure here, the first one here. Um, I thought this was useful in illustrating the areas of emphasis within the field of technology. So here, for instance, we, well, this is not the back of an envelope. Uh, please view this rather as uh, a pyramid, <laughs> all right? So they, let's say they're objects which we have out there in reality, trees. Let's say this is the field of forestry. And through abstraction, we, uh, so on, we have a concept of what this is, and a term is assigned to it. But this also has a definition, all right? Now, but tree could mean something completely different in computer science, okay? So we see that when we say technology focuses on subject fields, we're saying that in this particular example, although we have the same term, all right, but our understanding of this term is within this field as opposed to this field. Very important to bear in mind. Now, why is technology important? Here is a, a text, uh, the kind of texts I would and my colleagues would expect our students to be able to produce having attended this module. Now, looking at this text, about 35% of this text is made up of what? It's made up of terms. Now, how are you going to understand a text like this, or how are you going to produce a text like this if there are concerns with your technological knowledge? To make the point even clearer, imagine I took out those terms. The new configuration you have is absolutely meaningless. Okay? Again, underscoring the fact that in specialized fields, in the con areas of content that we teach, terms are the building blocks of knowledge and we need to accord attention to these terms if we want to make progress on um, uh, students' academic literacy practices. Now, what can go wrong? What is it that can go wrong? Or put differently, what is it that the discipline values with respect to technological knowledge? Again, this is the same piece of text as previously, and we might, in fact, assume that having had this module, students had an exam question or an essay question that would require them to produce 
a body of knowledge such as this, a text such as this, let's look at the kinds of things this discipline values, but at the same time, the, things, the kinds of things that can go wrong in order to appreciate just how important a technology approach can be to issues of uh, academic and content literacy. One thing that can go wrong is that in producing his or her text, the student may forget some terms. Terms may be misspelled. Parts of compound terms may be invented. Underlying concepts may not be well understood. Existing, in other words, terms that exist but are not appropriate to this context may be used. The relationships underlying terms may be distorted. Concepts exist in clusters. There are also some relations, hierarchical and so on and so forth, that exist. So just to illustrate that very quickly, I have modeled, I've used CMAP to model this text. To show you some of the kinds of things that can go wrong, when the student is producing this text, um, the student may, for instance, um, make this higher. In other words, make this the superordinate and make language planning the subordinate. Um, the position of this may shift. So this is something that can go wrong in a student's text. Another thing that may go wrong, in other words, something that is valued by a discipline, um, where you expect a term, the student may use a paraphrase, all right? And you say, look, I expect it. Using a term reflects your knowledge. It reflects the fact that you have appropriated both the content and the form of expression in this field. So you get disappointed when you expect a term and you find some paraphrase. Another thing that can go wrong, a definition may be wrongly introduced. I mean, very often you find things like, according to Scotton states that multilingualism is this and that. All right? So you miss the subject of that set. So introducing the definition can be a problem. Another thing that can go wrong is that the definition itself may be factually incorrect. All right? Or it could be correct, but for a different field. Or it could be structurally defective. An example of a structurally defective definition would be using the term you are defining in the definition itself, all right? Um, perhaps it's something you can relate to as well in... And another thing that could go wrong is an elaboration may be misconstrued as a definition. So you ask a student for a definition, and rather than get a definition, you get something like, well, um, according to scholars, um, there are many challenges in defining strategy. Um, the reasons are as follows. But your question is, define strategy. So, a number of things can go wrong. So, to, just to sum up, just to begin to give us a sense of just how important technology can be, we see that the picture we have here is a very diversified one, and it shows the kinds of uh, problems which our <coughs> students might have in writing their essays, uh, challenges that are ultimately attributable to technology. But I also think that it suggests the potential reach of technology in responding to some of the problems that we find in our students' essays. Not surprisingly, um, we have these views. Uh, but Einstein saying the substance of our knowledge resides in the detailed technology of the field. Orwell says, whoever possesses the technology, controls the vocabulary, controls the knowledge of the field. So against that backdrop, let us look at the data I have been collecting. My data has essentially been essays written by students 
in this uh, uh, in this module. Um, well, the research is ongoing, but for reasons of time, I've just focused on two groups of issues related to terminology. The first group we would say relates to the knowledge of terms and to the lexicogram of uh, terms. So problems like students not recalling specific terms to use, use of non-existing term for one that is presumably forgotten, use of inappropriate term, issues in the spelling of terms, use of paraphrase where term was expected, incorrect um, collocation for terms. With respect to definition, um, you find situations where the term being defined is used in the definition. So, um, marginalization is the marginalization of X, Y, Z, all right? Um, the, the head word is wrong. The genus, typically in, in the classical structure of a definition, you would have um, the definiendum. This is what you are defining. And then you have your relator, um, refers to is a or whatever. And then this would be the definience. And the definience breaks into two. In the classical Aristotelian definition, you would have the genus, okay? And then you have the differentiating characteristics. All right, so we have all of these challenges. So just to give you a snapshot of what, it's, what I'm finding in the data. With respect to the first one, non recall of specific terms. Now, the students are expected to give the three pillars of democracy as discussed in the module. You see here, for instance, that the student forgets this. Here, the student forgets, and so on and so forth. And you begin to wonder, um, Yes, students may be ill-prepared for higher education. They may not know how to uh, deal with concord. And, but certainly remembering, remembering words shouldn't be that much of a problem. But it's so, so pervasive. Okay? Now, you look at this. We expected status planning, couples planning, and acquisition planning. What do we find? We find all of the variants, unacceptable variants, on the line here. So um, for acquisition planning, we have strategic planning, ecological planning, integration, and corporate planning. And you, where, where is this coming from? Students are using valuable maps um, by doing things like this. Um, at times, you have the impression that students want to vary the terminology, so as they do not come across as using the same terms as the lecturers used. But in the process, you know, um, they fail to communicate. The idea of globalization as compression of space and time, um, all of a sudden becomes, well, whatever that word is, intercession. Perhaps it was intended as intersection. Um, expansion, insertion, integration. Max, valuable max have been lost here. For a term such as transidiomatic practices, we have all sorts of unacceptable variants. Transidiomatic media, transidiomatic. Should you still give max for this when you expect transidiomatic practices? Then, um, very, very striking the spelling of terms. For intended marginalization, you find things like imaginalization, um, marginalization. Uh, for compression of space and time, which we saw earlier on, we have convergence, compression, comparison. For acquisition planning, you have, well, things that look like inquisition <laughs> and accu accusation, and so on and so forth. OK. Um, let me move on to the other uh, uh, area, definitions. I did talk about using the term you're defining in the definition. So a uh, student is defining uh, marginalization and says marginalization refers to the marginalization of the illiterate group or representation. By being represented means that people can be represented. You lose valuable marks here. Um, okay. 
Oh, let me just look at this one. Um, a domain. In sociolinguistics, there's a specific definition of a domain. Now, because for some strange reason, the student has not paid attention to the field, he or she decides to look up Wikipedia and the very first definition they find of domain is what they use. A domain is an area of territory owned by or control, which is completely irrelevant. Or the definition of space, you know, goes into spatial morphology and all of that. So things that are not relevant. So the question basically is, um, how can we use terminology as a way to respond to some of these challenges? As you can see, these problems are really, really ubiquitous. Any way you look, you find them. They are ultimately problems of technology. Now, as part of my research, based on this data, I am having um, focused discussions with uh, the students. And one of the things uh, that is emerging is what I've referred to here as oral, oral memories versus visual memories. Repeatedly, uh, especially with the spelling of uh, terms, um, students would say that in order not to forget a term, say in English, they will pronounce it the way they would pronounce it in their language, all right? But unfortunately, having done that, when they are now writing, they forget when they remember what the term is, rather than write it in the way you would expect them to write it in English, you find them writing it in the way of resources to address uh, some of these challenges. And essentially, to be able to say that, yes, issues of academic literacy uh, unwieldy, but uh, from the standpoint of technology, we can at least isolate a number of these issues and attempt to respond to them. Thank you. Yes, please. So, I mean, this issue of technology and, and different definitions belonging with different disciplines right. comes up quite a lot in the library, where the student will come to the library and say, I need to write a bibliography for the essay. Where, as a librarian, a bibliography means something completely different. But, both definitions are correct. So, what do you do in a situation where a student hands in an essay, and you know that the definition that the student uses is correct in a field that they are actually studying, but not, might not be relevant to that particular field. How, how do you respond to that? Um, well, obviously, obviously it's, uh, it's, it's not correct. I mean, if you expect them to define um, an atom in a certain way, and you don't get that definition, um, the learning associated with that has not been achieved. It has not been attained. Um, because if you say uh, in your line curriculum um, that uh, one of the learning outcomes is that the student should be able to define an atom in this manner, and you have an essay where that is not reflected. If that definition holds true in biochemistry or subatomic physics, but it does not hold for the field in which you are working, it is not correct. So the particular learning outcome has simply not been attained. And you therefore do whatever you need to do to ensure that that student attains that outcome. So the point really is that um, objects in reality are multidimensional. They can be viewed from different perspectives. All right? If you take a coal, for instance, C-O-A-L, um, for the geologist, it's a rock. All right? For the fellow in energy or economics, it's a source of uh, income. Um, so, but in this field, for us, it's a rock. We are in geology. So you need to 
behave like a geologist. So don't give me the definition of the power expert or the economist when I ask you to define a, um, a coal. So I would, I would penalize you, I would penalize you there. But of course, make you understand why you're being penalized, why you're doing it all that. So it's binary, it's either right or wrong, it's going to area. Um, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to say that. I would rather say um, the, the learning, the intended learning outcome has not been achieved. It's my responsibility to get you to achieve that by, you know, pointing out what it is that uh, you need to do. But invariably, I, I find this uh, very often in my scripts all the time. Students, um, for whatever reason, don't read the course reader or don't read the prescribed literature, don't attend lectures, um, Google, get to Wikipedia, the very first definition, the final the concept, the pick it and then plug it in. So the, the, the threshold concepts in the educational outcomes, they talk about, I mean, the, the, the threshold concept that shows that you, you understand what this discipline is about and it has affected you positively, is just not there.